have become this person. Well, these are the people that are afraid of the world. They are afraid of people making fun of them. They are afraid of coming across as being the fool, being embarrassed. They don't like people in general. Well, I learned a very interesting lesson many years ago. I took part in a one week long drama workshop. I was pretty excited about this. Prior to that, I'd had no theatrical experience, and I'm hesitant to add, I've had none since. <laughs> I think what really intrigued me about this particular week was that I was going to be away from my husband and kids for seven days. <laughs> Off I went to Trent University, Peterborough, Ontario. I look at the program, I check in, it says Sunday night all you gotta do is meet in the seminar room, introduce yourself. <laughs> this is gonna be great. So I go back in my room, I slip into something, smart casual. And then I venture off to the seminar room, and before I walk in, I always like to stand in the doorway, check out the environment to which I'd soon be a part of, and as I did that, suddenly I became like a little tortoise, and I felt myself slowly retreat back into the shell that I never knew I had. And the reason was very simple. Have any of you ever spent time with 20 other creative theatrical types? <laughs> Let me tell you how painful it is. These are the kind of people that when they wake up in the morning and they get dressed, they just don't throw on a shirt. They always throw on something just a wee bit extra. These are the people that you see strutting down the halls of the hospital with a six-foot length scarf draped over their right shoulder. <laughs> and it doesn't move all day long. that you see walking downtown in your little town and they're wearing a great big fedora with a turquoise feather hanging out of it. Doesn't bother them. These are the people that when they walk into a room, they just don't walk into a room. They swing, they sway, and they skip into the room. And when it's time to introduce themselves, they don't just blurt out their name. They do it in rap, they do it in rhyme, they do it in song. And all of a sudden, I felt every inhibition that I have never experienced in my whole life surfaced right to the top and great feelings of intimidation came over me. Well, I kind of tiptoed into the room that night and I kind of blurted out my name. When I went back to my room, I thought, this is going to be a little bit more difficult than I had originally anticipated. <laughs> and then Monday morning, we met our creative little instructor and he led us through a series of creative type exercises that would blow you away. And after the first day, I'm thinking, oh, jeez, I don't know if I can do this. And by Tuesday night, Joe and those kids were re looking real good to me. <laughs> but Tuesday night, all I really had to do was go back into my room and give myself a psych-up job. The first thing I did is I got the extension out on this finger. I said, Carol, you paid big bucks for this experience. Now you go out there tomorrow and you enjoy yourself. Well, all of a sudden, I was motivated. All of a sudden, I was open to new opportunities, and I had a fresh perspective. The next day, I walked into the class. The instructor said, I want you all to please stand. I'm thinking to myself, I can do this. And then I heard him say, I want you all to close your eyes. Two for two, honey, hang in there. <laughs> and then I heard him say, I want you to imagine. Now, here's a hot tip for all of you. Whenever anyone says to you, I want you to imagine, please understand that it's going to be an out-of-mind experience. <laughs> are far too important, far too overstressed, underworked, underslept and underpaid that we don't have time to take time out of our life to imagine. But I hung in there and I listened carefully to his instructions. He said, I want you to imagine that your world is a bubble. Uh-oh. He said, I want you to feel the walls of your bubble. What is the texture? What is the fabric? Where are the windows? Where is the door? All I could think of is, where's that door? Get me out of here! He said, I want you to feel the walls of your bubble. Stretch, push, extend your utter limits. Feel your world growing. And suddenly all I could feel were lingering thoughts of doom and gloom on my mind. The first one being, thank goodness my friends aren't here to see me do this. <laughs> And then I decided that if I was going to continue on with this exercise, that I would have to answer my greatest fear and be true to myself. And I decided in order to continue on with this mind-expanding 
exercise that I would have to open up one eye. <laughs> and as I continued to push and stretch the walls of my bubble, you know what I saw when I looked around the room? I saw 20 other people pushing, stretching, clawing their way through their bubble with one eye open to. <laughs> And what I discovered that, that morning was it does not matter who we are, where we live, the job we have, the money we make, deep down, each one of us have the same fears. We don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want people to pay attention to us. We don't want people to look at us in a judgmental way, pass any sort of criticism along our way. And most importantly, we don't want anyone to get this finger, point it in our direction, and laugh behind it.